say. Um, we're glad to have you with us this day for our student success seminar. I guess I'm being critiqued again. When Amy comes, she tends to bring somebody with her, which is great. <laughs> which is great. She's gotten in the habit of doing that, which is fine by me. We have um, Mrs. Amy Henderson with us again today for career services. She's going to talk to you a little bit about career readiness. Um, she has a couple of, has an activity for you and a presentation, so please give her your undivided attention, okay? All yours. All right, y'all, I'm Amy Henderson, and I'm the Director of Career Services. So what we're going to talk about today is what you see on the screen, career readiness. Um, NACE is the National Association of Colleges and Employers, not that you probably even know, care, or will care anymore, but they are kind of the governing body for career preparedness. And so they kind of are the standard for what people should be doing. So they emphasize eight competencies, and we're going to talk about those today. But first, we're going to do a um, little icebreaker exercise. I know Miss Q likes for us to do those at the beginning. So we'll kind of break into groups. So if a, some of y'all will come to the middle, I think that's a good group on this side. And then if some of y'all will kind of shift to the middle, and we'll have four groups. So like y'all can kind of divide into two groups if you want to, and y'all can stay where you are, however you want to do it. But I'm going to give all of you some cups, some string, and a rubber band. And what I want you to do, the goal of this activity is to create a pyramid with the cups. But while you're building the pyramid, you're not allowed to touch the cups with your hands, but you have to use all of the materials that are given. Okay? So you can't touch the cups with your hands, and you have to use all the material given. And you're going to build a pyramid. So I'm going to give everybody a little set of materials. So this is group one. Y'all can be two back here. All right, you guys can be three. All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's important because employers want people who love what they do and will continue um, until they get the job done. They won't just give up. So, for example, when I told the group back here, hey guys, you use your hands to get them apart, we need to put them back together, they didn't give up. They actually built a really great pyramid. So, that's part of that critical thinking. So, we talked some about ways to develop the competency, but basically, one way to develop the critical thinking competency is to solve a problem, develop an action plan with steps, brainstorm a problem with solutions from beginning to end with a supervisor or instructor. So a lot of times just working with students, they will come in and say, I have a problem or someone gave me this grade or I didn't earn this grade or whatever. And one of the first things I say is, hey, have you talked to your instructor? Have you brainstormed with them? Do you know why that's happening? Also, activate your mind. You know, a lot of times, I know I'm usually on my phone, texting, whatever, and our information is really easy to get to us, and sometimes we're not stimulating our mind for those critical thinking skills. So, you know, read, do puzzles, write, engage in something other than, um, you know, just mindless games, which I love to play too, so don't, don't get me wrong. Um, participate in group projects and service learning, um, and another would be to potentially write research papers, that kind of thing, have individual creative thoughts. So leadership. All of you have obviously demonstrated that in some way or other, but NACE um, defines that as leveraging the strengths of others to achieve common goals, organizing, prioritizing, and delegating work, and using empathetic skills to guide and motivate. So what does this look like? The individual is able to assess and manage his or her emotions um, and those of others. They use empathetic skills to guide and motivate, organize, and delegate work. Why is this important in the workplace? Again, what I'm most interested in. Employers are looking for people who can leverage the strength of others for a common goal. So obviously all of you have had some sort of leadership training. So whether it's on a team, as an ambassador in a class, all of us have had opportunities to have leadership and to showcase to others how we do that. So obviously ways to do that is take a leadership role in a group or organization, demonstrate initiative at your job or internship by taking additional responsibilities. One thing, have any of y'all had a, a job or internship? So most of, you know, a good number of you have had that. If you demonstrate initiative on the job, that is a really great way to get a reference. What do are, what are references do for you in your job search? Yeah, hopefully they're going to say really good things about you. They're going to say things like, you're on time, you did a good job, you worked hard. Showing that leadership at your job will often help you get a good recommendation. Um, Motivate team members with a positive attitude and leverage their strengths when delegating work and also participate in group projects and student organizations. So if right now you're not involved in the student organization, get involved. There's lots of opportunities to get involved here at Shelton. Um, I always tell students at the end of the day, do something. Obviously, most of you do already, but I say getting you know, sitting in the atrium and hanging out in the atrium is not something that I would be able to help you with, and that's not an employable skill at the end of the day. So do something during your time here. Get involved in an organization. You know, if you just ask, there are plenty of people, there's lots of things to do here, and everybody would love to get you involved. So the next is communication. This is another one of those competencies. Um, articulating thoughts and ideas clearly and effectively to a variety of audiences and demonstrating public speaking skills. How have you already done this? Most of you probably. What class have you taken? Speech? How, how many people take a speech? Probably most, everybody, right? It's on our degree plan, so you're taking speech. But basically, that's exactly what it looks like. You can write, articulate, um, and communicate effectively. This is, important, this is important because employers need people who are able to articulate their thoughts and ideas <coughs> appropriately with a wide variety of individuals. Now, I see a lot of um, 
students who um, email the way that they talk. One thing about our community is there's a very large population of people from different countries here. One because of the University of Alabama, and then you have the automotive industry. And so some of those people are even struggling, or not struggling, but it is hard to read some of our southern dialect as it is. And then imagine throwing, communicating like a text and an email on top of that. And oftentimes that's a, um, that's a disaster. So you want to be sure that you're working on your communication skills daily. Ways that you can do that is develop and deliver a presentation for a class. I'm sure all of you have had to do that, obviously, in speech, um, speech class, or in some of your other classes you'll have those. So that's a great way to work on that. Also, clarifying questions to check for understanding. So if you don't know exactly what someone is asking in a class, one of your instructors, you don't know exactly what they're saying, ask. That's also a part of communication. If you don't understand something, don't just sit there and don't say anything. Communicate. Say that you don't understand that. But that's a good point because a lot of times, if you're that person that doesn't understand it, someone else doesn't understand it either. Um, Proofread online and written communication to avoid errors. This is one of probably the number one things with communication. I see it a lot, especially in things like um, resumes, cover letters, that kind of thing. Let people proofread those for you. Make sure that those are all correct before those are sent out. And so, obviously, this is registered for courses such as English composition or speech participate in student organizations and carefully construct papers and contribute to projects. So that's a good way to work on that communication skill that's so very much needed. Professionalism. The way that it's defined by NACE is demonstrating personal accountability and effective work habits, punctuality, working productively with others, time management, understanding the importance of professional work image, and deliberating um, and demonstrating integrity. So what does this look like? Obviously, individuals demonstrate integrity and ethical behavior. They act responsibly with the interests of the larger community in mind, and they're able to learn from his or her mistakes. So one of the couple of things in this that I want to make sure that I point out is effective work habits. That's very important in the workplace. The number one thing that employers are telling us is that students overall when they come out of college do not get to work on time and don't work while they're at work so whether that's you know taking too long of a break playing on your phone whatever that looks like that is something to be considered so be sure that y'all are obviously learning those skills too here at Shelton by being on time for class that kind of thing but the number one thing is people tell us that punctuality people Students are not on time when they get out of the work, when they get out of school. So be sure you're working on that while you're here. So it's important because employers want people who are punctual, that can manage their time, learn from their mistakes, and hold themselves to a high level of integrity and ethics. This learn from your mistakes thing is really important. One of the things, does anybody know who Patrick Murphy is? Anybody? Byron. <laughs> Heard the name. Heard the name. Alabama softball. So one of the things that he says, and I've, I've always thought, and a lot of times I've used it in my presentation, basically he says, uncoachable kids become unemployable adults. So his philosophy in his program there is to groom kids that are young athletes that are able to be coached. So for example, if you think what your coach is telling you is the silliest thing. If those players think that Coach Murphy is the craziest man alive because they played some kid in right field that should have never been there, you know, obviously that's a coachable moment for him or whatever the case may be, however they're, they're looking at that. But being able to listen to directions, follow the directions of your supervisor, obviously if it's unethical, if it's against the law, that kind of thing, you don't want to do it. But if it's something that for, this is a, a good example of that. We have a lot of nursing students here at Shelton, right? So they go to DCH. Well, DCH has a little bit way of doing, different way of doing things than maybe our nursing students learned while they, they were here at Shelton. And so instead of saying, I'm not going to do it that way because 
You know, somebody told me that this was, my instructor told me this is the way to do it at Shelton. They listen and their supervisor is telling them what they're going to do, what their process is. Nothing immoral or illegal, just a little bit different process. And you've got to be able to adapt to those things. So, how to develop this competency. You know, use a planner or calendar to prioritize your time. How many of y'all have a planner? Anybody? Okay. Y'all use your phone to keep up with where you're supposed to be? A lot of times that's the way, I think that's, back in the olden days there were, you know, the big paper planners and everybody wrote it down and that was the way you kept up with it. Now I think most, most people are keeping up with it, up, up with that on their phone. You can have a reminder. That's always a good thing. Reflect on a recent challenge and identify the areas of growth and professional and improvement for the future. So know, know where something went wrong and know how you're going to fix it and be better um, for the future. This is a big one, and I know that y'all are sick of people telling y'all this, probably, but review your social media through the eyes of a future employer and determine the appropriateness. So if you believe that employers are not going to look at your social media account, that's not true. Or if you believe even that you are em employed at a place, at an um, employer, and they're not going to look at your social media, that's not true either. I had a student over at the CA Fred campus in the respiratory therapy department, and he told me, look, lady, if they're looking at my social media account, then I don't want to work for them. Well, guess what? It's going to happen. So be very careful about what you're posting. Make sure that it's appropriate. If you are an employer, I even warn students or any of y'all going into any of our technical fields, a lot of our technical students, their bosses, a lot of times, are from what college you think? Auburn, because they have a building science program. So a lot of our students work for Auburn graduates. Now, if they are that crazy, psycho Alabama fan on Facebook or whatever, and, you know, they have bad things about Auburn or whatever the case may be, and, and there are two candidates that are the exact same, I don't really want to work with that person. I don't want to work with that person either, right? So you've got to be careful, even if, even, even if it's something with sports or whatever, you want to be very careful about what you're posting on social media. Um, and make sure that it's appropriate also. And be, sure, be careful about what other people post on your page, too. You can also delete that, take that off. Um, often, always attend class and complete assignments on time. This kind of goes back to that references thing, if you're attending class and completing assignments on time, that is a huge thing that instructors can say about you. They can tell employers that you're on time, that you complete tasks, that you are, um, you do things in a timely manner. That's a very, that's a big thing. Obviously, we talked about this today. Teamwork, um, teamwork, the definition is building collaborative relationships representing diverse cultures, races, ages, gender, religions, lifestyles, and viewpoints, working within team structure and negotiating and managing conflicts. So the, what it looks like is that you're able to work within a team structure and can negotiate and manage conflicts. So that's basically what all of you do in the groups that you're in, whether it's in a class, whether it is on a team, whether it's in a group, whether it's in a student organization. Teamwork is very important. People need, employers need people who are able to collaborate and achieve a common goal. Employers don't want people necessarily that work in silos and this is mine, don't touch it. We don't, you know, they want people that are able to cross collaborate and are able to kind of build that synergy or that energy between different groups to be able um, to make things more successful. So one way that you can kind of work on this is to collaborate with others on a class project, you know, where the um, responsibility is shared and not always divided. Handle difficult conversations in person with respect. Um, consider other perspectives before making a decision and participate in group projects and student organizations, obviously. Teams, student organizations, all of those things are great ways to work on teamwork. I think most of y'all have got that one down pat. So, career management. Career management is identifying and articulating skills, 
strength, knowledge, and experience in negotiating career options and pursuing these opportunities. So career management for you right now, what would that look like? How are you managing your career? Growing grades. Your, your grades, your GPA, because guess what? Even when you grow up, like I've been working, I think, 10 years before I applied at Shelton State. You know what they asked me for? My, my college transcript. They did. They wanted to make sure. I don't know. Maybe I had to have my high school one at that point. I don't know. They asked. I mean, it was all but, you know, prick your finger and give some blood. But, you know, that will follow you forever. That's great. They do look at that. There's another thing with this. Just so y'all know, if you, um, if you do not graduate from Shelton State and you put on your resume that you attended Shelton State, Make sure that you don't represent it like you like you graduated from here, like December 2000, whatever to December 2000, you know, 18. You don't want to say that because there is. So, for example, DCH, they verify everything that is on your application, and if you falsify your application in any way, you are not hired, and so and then you're flagged in their system. So they're one of the area's largest employers, but you want to be sure that you put things that are actually correct. Some of our students will maybe, they think they graduated, they never fill out an application for graduation, and then DCH will call us and go, the clearinghouse that they have says that you never graduated, and so then we have to go back and basically reaward that degree. So you want to be sure that what you're putting on your resume, people do check. So that's a, that is definitely a big thing. Um, so basically, people, employers need people, workers, who can self-advocate um, in the workplace and articulate their strengths, skills, knowledges, and experiences. So employers want you to be able to tell them, too, you know, this is what I see. I see these things in the organization. I am good at these things. These are my strengths. These are my skills. This is my knowledge. This is how I can help you. Now, if they do anything with it or not, sometimes you may get frustrated with that because you're trying to manage your career plan and maybe move up or whatever the case may be. You may get, um, you know, frustrated with that at some point, but um, it, it will work out. So, to develop, ways to develop this competency right now is to visit career services. You know, if you need a resume, make sure that whether you're transferring to another school, another four-year institution, whether you're going into the workplace, whatever it is, you need to have a resume that is competitive with other students. You need to be ready because when you get when you get to wherever you're going, you're going to need a resume. One of the things, even if you don't use it, because right now resumes are kind of one of those things that people still need it, but everybody applies online now. And people aren't even really uploading resumes as much as they used to. And so, but it's more of a copy and paste thing. There is going to be a field. Maybe they want everybody's application to look the same. So they want to know what you did in those jobs. Be able to articulate that. Have that ready to go so when you apply for those jobs. Also, mock interviews. That goes back to communication. All of those different kinds of skills are available. Attend career fairs. We just had... Um, WOW 2.0. Hopefully some of you were able to come to that. Um, most of you have probably completed Focus 2. Are y'all in orient anybody in orientation right now? No. So in orientation, everybody completes the Focus 2 assessment. It kind of tells you what your strengths are, what you're good at, what you may be interested in. It also gives you ideas of, you know, hey, I never thought that maybe I wanted to be a, um, a game designer or something, a, a toy designer. We had a student last semester that took this assessment and she is in our um, engineering and graphics design department. I think it's, yeah, engineering and graphics technology. They just changed their name. So she never had thought about that, but there's a lot of design work that goes into children's toys. And so that might be something that she wants to do, just not something she had ever thought about. So if you want to think about those kind of options, Definitely let me know and we can look at that focus too. If you have not had an internship, that is a great way to get real world experience in your field and also to find out if that's a field that you really love or not. So some students come in and they want to have an internship or job shadow experience. 
we can help set that up. Um, we don't necessarily have an internship office per se, but if you want to come in and you want to talk about that, we can definitely talk about some internship experiences. A lot of students go out and they decide, oh, I want to be an accountant, so they're in our accounting program. Well, when they go out, they discover, I'm really a people person and I like to be around people and sitting in this cube, a little space like this, you know, all day with all my stuff is not something that I would want to do. So you want to be sure that the program of study you're going into fits with what your um, what your strengths and your talents are and what you like to do. You want to be sure that you're doing that. Also, um, participate in Interview Stream. Interview Stream is a live streaming um, site that we have here at Shelton State. You can come in and do a one-on-one -on -one mock interview, or you can do Interview Stream. Interview Stream is just a computer program, and there's a little voice that says, Tell me a little bit about yourself. And then you're able to give your answer, which that's actually a hard one for a lot of people. And so you're able to give your answer and play those answers back and see how you sound answering those questions. So just as a little trivia, I guess, um, how, how would you answer that question if I said, tell me a little bit about yourself? Talk about your work history, things you've done successfully. Conflicts you handle in the workplace or in the team environment. Very good. Exactly. You want to talk about you know your work history, what you've done. You don't want to have a lot of ladies who come in and they are very proud. Maybe they have children. Maybe they have a child, and they say, you know, my my proudest moment is has been having children, going back to school, that kind of thing. Now, for us ladies, that's one of the things you want to avoid period, is personal information in an interview. They can't ask you any of those things. So when I applied here, I have three children, and they're 10, 6, and 5 now. So my life is crazy, and people would probably think that in an interview if I said that now, but I've been here four years. So, you know, when I applied here, they were 7, and all were 7 and younger. So what do you think they would think about me if I had said in an interview, tell me about yourself? Well, I have three children that are all 7 and under. Calling in a lot. You have a lot going on. Those kind of things. All that personal information that you give, they can't ask that. So it's really important if you do mock interviews, we can kind of talk about just what you're saying. You want to talk about job history. You want to, the bottom line is you want them to know this is the job that I want. So how should I answer the question to let them know my skills? for that job, right? So you don't want to, you really want to um, mock interview before you go out into the workplace. You don't, and another thing that I've seen a lot, and how many of y'all have a resume? Most of you probably should because of orientation, that kind of thing. If you don't, you should definitely um, have a resume. But one of the things I would say, don't put your picture on your resume. Don't put your personal information. I see a lot of templates now that have, you know, your date of birth, that kind of thing. Anything personal, that's yours. Don't give it to anybody else. So another thing is technology. Now, you guys are probably not, y'all are a great group to talk to about this because y'all are probably pretty savvy with technology. Selecting and utilizing technology to solve problems and accomplish goals. Employers need people who know and understand various technologies that are current or emerging and related to the profession. So, for example, what's something in some of your fields of current or emerging technology? Anybody know? Anything? Say, so for example, engineering, or currently in our, um, I still call it drafting, but it's engineering and, what's the technical name of it, you know? Engineering and, I don't know, anyway, drafting. Um, they are able to draw plans for different things. Usually, has anybody heard of AutoCAD? AutoCAD is the program that they use. The new and emerging technology there is Revit. Some of the bigger companies that have come in have requested even that we have classes on that new and emerging technology. So you want to be sure that you know and you're kind of on the front runner of that so that you're trained in your area. Um, obviously, 
a way to develop that is to participate in student organizations. They have the newest, they have people coming in, talking to their organizations, telling them about the latest and greatest things, what they're using, and also participating in group projects and obviously research. So the next and, um, is global fluency. How many of you guys speak more than one language? Anybody? No? Anybody? Spanish a little bit maybe? Yeah, maybe a little bit yeah. from high school or something? You have some of those? Um, global fluency, that's not what this is, but it does have a piece of that. Valuing, respecting, and learning from diverse cultures, races, ages, genders, sexual orientations, religions. Obviously, having that global fluency, people, employers want people who demonstrate the ability to interact um, respectfully and understand individual differences. This is huge in the workplace, in the world, in society, to have a global fluency to know, know different people, to be able to interact with different people. You know, in Tuscaloosa, sometimes we feel like we're in this bubble and this is kind of, this is it. But there's this whole big world out there that think differently than we do, that act differently than we do, that have different um, opinions than we do. So we want to be sure that we're definitely paying attention to that. So attend an event on campus that encourages you to step outside your comfort zone. What would that be here at Shelton, maybe? Maybe you had to go to a, maybe a theater production or anything? You've had to do that for different things? Maybe that, for you, that may be stepping outside of your comfort zone. That may be something that you've never done before. You're not interested in that. But stepping outside, what about Collegiate 100? Have you, you been to any of those events? Um, there's all different kinds of things. Even during homecoming week, there were lots of activities. You know, if, did you interact with those? Did you meet different people that were outside of the group that you already know or the people that you already know? Um, obviously, engaging in conversations with individuals who have different perspectives than your own. Um, in speech, you may have come across that. That speech class has all kinds of stuff, right? You have to do a pers persuasive speech. You know, you may have have, have have one view, but maybe you learn something from someone else's speech. Um, participate in volunteer experiences to broaden your horizons. I really encourage a lot of our technical students even to volunteer, whether it's Habitat for Humanity or whatever it is. They can use the skills that they're learning in the classroom and relate that to building a house. Um, register for humanities courses and participate in student organizations and attend cultural events on campus, which would be theater, that kind of thing. We have a great theater department, so you would learn lots from there. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, we talked a little bit about today, social media. And so I'm not going to look at what all of your social media pictures look like. How many of you have a LinkedIn account? Anybody? LinkedIn is a social networking site that is a professional social networking site. And so you're able to connect with different people. How many of you have a headshot or an appropriate picture on your, pretty much? Okay, Perfurio is our staff photographer. Yeah. Um, media and communication special. I don't, I'm not sure, Guru. He is amazing at what he does. So he's going to come up and kind of show you a couple of different. You want, you want to do this? Yeah, let's pull, pull it up. He wants to show you a couple of differences in photos. And he, after this session, he will be able to take a photo of you, um, just a headshot, so that you can use on your social media, that kind of thing. So I think you kind of knew that ahead of time. So if you want to do that today, we can, so that you're able to use. He can send it to you. You can use it however you want to. You can put it on your social media, um, whatever you want to do with it. So. You can do it this afternoon sometime if you want to. Everybody, basketball, you all know me because we've done your pictures, right? For what? For roster? Um, what else do we use them on? Um, when, you, when you make the NBA or whatever, <coughs> guess what they want? A headshot. They want to know what you look like. Let's get out of sports. Let's go somewhere else. Engineering, anything else. Anything you do, they're going to want to see what you look like. Now, obviously, you know, the interview and all those things where you don't put personal information and all that, yeah, that's one thing. But there is 
going to be a time when they need to see what you look like in the professional environment, no matter what it is. And so, in the art world and the photography world, we always say presentation is nine tenths of the law. Believe me, it is true. Presentation is nine tenths of the law. No matter no matter what you do, the way you present it is what they're going to perceive. It's what they're going to see immediately when they first meet you. When they first in the case of a job, any job, they want to, you know, there's going to be that first encounter. Other than meeting you and shaking your hand, they're going to have to see what you look like. So, headshots, that's what it's all about. Headshots are very, very important. So, what people are doing is they're doing this, okay? Do you think an employer is going to look at that and go, wow, this person is really professional, it, it, you know, we can really use them? Sports, you know, even if it's sports, you think sports is just very loose, very cool, very nice, but you know, very athletic. But if you give them a picture outside, you know, on an iPhone that you took, you know, with a dirty wall behind you or something, or bricks or something, it just doesn't represent you like it does when we do the headshots of y'all, okay? You've seen those. And they look good in a program, they look good. And at roster, they look good when the uh, recruiter is trying to get you out, you know, recruited. So, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? Um, so instead, what if we, did we have, the, yeah, yeah um, studio headshots, headshots that are professional headshots. Uh, obviously, these are a little bit more into the, you know, you could say actors or, uh, what could we, could we use those in? We could use them a lot of different ways, but for an interview, if you hand them a headshot like this for a female, or let's look at a male, where there's a good male up there, you know, that headshot for a male, um, it's in the studio, it's with studio lights, it's, it, and so you do have to go through the trouble of having, you know, getting somebody to take your picture. Now, everybody smiles at pictures and all that because it's all about, you know, what you look like, and is your hair right, and this and that, and everything, but if you could leave that out of the picture and think about, okay, again, presentation is nine-tenths of all. What are you going to present to this person that you're trying to apply for a job, you know, it, it, or, um, what, any other, any, any situation? Well, just especially on social media, I mean, that's how you present yourself, so... The whole world sees you in social media. You're act, 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 actually trying to spread yourself out. In social media, and that's that's what it's all about. LinkedIn is a professional way to e expose yourself to employers, and believe me, they they look at that picture. They look at what you look like because when they're reading about you and they see that you have this skill and this skill and this skill, they're trying to picture in their head what do you look like? What what is this person that's so good at doing this? What do they look like? And then when they see your picture and they see that. Or that they see what they see power they see um, uh, confidence confidence yeah. that's you know, it and it's, it's your image it's the, the it's what you're trying to sell so when you're trying to get a job when you're trying to get um, employment you guys are all going to be professionals when you leave Shelton State and find a job when you graduate from a four-year college you're going to be a professional and so that's what they're expecting of you so they do look at this stuff, and even if it's just while you're job searching, I, I encourage it a little bit longer than that, but if, even if it's while you're job searching, especially sites like LinkedIn that are going to be so valuable to you um, during that time, make sure that your, your photograph is professional, because even if all they can see about you because you have not um, made it a public site is your photograph, that's one thing you don't want. You don't want to be unprofessional. Now, if you're going into something artsy, like Rebecca said, some of these pictures are definitely appropriate. I tell students all the time, if you're going into graphic design, do a resume with your name down the side. Show how you can use your graphic design skills in your resume. I think that's fine. But if not, we need to have something more. Um, I think y'all would probably call it boring. I think it looks nice. Just, just don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted that that you don't need a, a decent picture, a, a headshot, a, a way to, to to express yourself in an image, okay? Uh, again, back to basketball, uh, you succeed in your, in your basketball career, 
somebody's going going to recruit you, or you make the, the professional environment, they're going to need that that headshot, that image. And if it's done with an iPhone, you know, kind of again, or the grass behind you, or something, that doesn't denote professionalism, which is what you're going into. So, also the media. Remember, the media uses your images a lot. In, in, in athletics, in engineering, in anything else, success means the media is going to get a hold of it. Okay? Remember that. Success, the media is going to get a hold of it. You know that. These days, that's what happens. So that means not only social media, but the media. So now you're going to be on TV. So do they want it to, do you want the world on TV to see you against, you know, just sitting there on the grass going gold, you know. That's great for personal stuff and for, you know, friends and things like that. But when, it, when the word professional gets in the picture, now you need to be thinking and not take it for granted and take a nice headshot, a nice image that if it ends up on media, on TV, on anything, on billboards, on whatever it is, then it's going to be a nice image. And if it ends up, let's take any other career, nursing, engineering, anything, when you succeed and you move up to the next level, they're going to need an image of you. They're going to, they're going to have to expose you to that, to that success. And it's, it's better if you have a decent image. So if you're here at the college, I'm here because I work for the college and you know we're here for you. So definitely come down to the studio. We have the studio lights. We have, I have a way you know, to make a nice image of you. If you move on, um, go to a professional environment. Uh, don't let your friend take it you know, against the tree in the background or something. Uh, go to a professional environment and spend the money a little bit or um, you know, there are much, but many, many levels of professional environment where they can take your headshots with studio lights, with a nice camera, with a nice lens that makes your your face look really presentable. And the lighting is important. Again, back to the presentation is not going to be long. Present it, present it well. Okay? So hopefully that will help you in your future. Um, Do any of y'all have any questions about career readiness, being ready for your career? Some of the things that, that you're going to need to do for that to happen. Anything? Any questions? Yes, I have a question about the headshot. So basically, like, you don't want to be smiling on your headshot, like professional or? No, yeah, yeah, that's part of it. Yeah, uh -huh. smiles are good. Okay. You know? uh, definitely, it's just the, the the whole the whole presentation of the, how the photo is taken. Okay. Uh, that's why I give the example of the iPhone yeah. as being Maybe. kind of. Maybe just not like, you know, like this girl like hanging out on the grass, you know, or something. I mean, maybe the iPhone can do this, and it's great. But now look at this here. What happens to his face when that iPhone gets really close? Yeah. It looks like a fish, you know. <laughs> right? Okay, that's called yeah. a fish. It is. It's called a fish eye effect. You know? Okay? So you don't want that face to be your professional face. Yeah. You want that face to be your professional face. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. You know? Yeah. yeah. The presentation is nine tenths of the law. Present it properly. Don't, you know, so this is great for friends and for, you know, social media and all that, but yeah. professional, uh, it's just not going to take you anywhere. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for being here today.
growing your faith. Thank you for coming.